Grant Robinson. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mr Chair. And, you know, I, I enter this debate with some trepidation as a non-lawyer. Um, and following on from, from um, Mr Parker and Mr Bridges, who are both obviously uh, people with, with extensive legal uh, backgrounds. But I guess I can bring a slightly different perspective. And I too wanted to carry on from Simon Bridges' audition to be the Justice Minister that we, we just heard before um, by, by picking up the question of, of the purpose of the Act. Um, um, in part one of this bill, Mr. Mr Chair, which tells us that the purpose of the Act is to promote access to justice by establishing a system that provides legal services to people of insufficient means. And my colleague, Mr Parker, has just suggested that the word appropriate may uh, need to appear in there because, as he's noted, um, perhaps not everybody making use of the legal aid system would be doing that should they have their own means. I perhaps take a slightly different view, um, not so much about whether that word should be in there, but about the question of, of what, what we, why we have legal aid. And the fact that I noted in, when reading through some of the um, material from um, Dame Margaret Basie's report that the legal aid system is perceived by many people to be second rate. And I do think that presents, I guess, the, the balancing argument, in a sense, to the one Mr Parker just gave, that we do need to strengthen a system that, by definition, the users of it are people who are often... Um, at a financial disadvantage or are perhaps socially excluded in some ways, that they have a system they have confidence in will provide them justice. And I think it, it, for many people, if, if there is a perception that this is a, a second-rate system in some way, we need to strengthen it. And I do believe that that's what this piece of legislation does. But it is an important point, I think, to note that the provision of legal services to people of insufficient means is a very much part of a, of a social contract, a social, the social fabric of how we ensure there is access to justice. And by all means, we, and, and this um, bill does do this, we need tests for people who are receiving it. We need to be sure that they are genuinely of insufficient means and also that it is the appropriate uh, form of, of, of uh, protection and, and advocacy that they might have. And I do note in that regard, Mr Chair, that um, the idea in, in Margaret Baisley and indeed Mr Powers' uh, response to Margaret Baisley's report of extending the public defence service is obviously a good example of how we are looking at other more perhaps appropriate means of providing the advocacy and support to people because it won't always come through the legal aid system. Mr Chair, I also just want to note that, as some, again, somebody who isn't from the legal profession, uh, when the report came out, um, the, or the original report came out, there was some feeling that, that this represented a, a system rotten to its core, that somehow the legal aid system, in fact, uh, um, was, was um, really a drain on, our ta on taxpayers, it wasn't providing a good service, it was full of rip-off agents. And I think it's important to note in this part one of the bill to say that that's clearly not the case. Most legal aid lawyers are providing a good service for their clients. Perhaps the perception is that um, from some of them they're not getting that service, but most of them are not there ripping off the system. Sure, there have been some, and it's important to highlight that. But I think the integrity of this part of our justice system needs to be upheld. Obviously, a piece of legislation such as this is making steps towards that. But I wouldn't want um, the public of New Zealand to be left with the impression, following on from the inquiry and from the government's response to it, that the system is rotten to the core. And we had some interchange in this House last year between um, the, uh, Leanne Dalzell and Simon Power around um, those perhaps lawyers in South Auckland, for instance, and whether they had actually been given a fair go in this process. And I think it is important that we note tonight on the record that there are a large number of legal aid lawyers doing excellent work, and those that aren't we hope will be um, identified and through some of the systems that have been put in place under this bill that actually they can be uh, weeded out if they are not uh, performing in the way that we would like them to. Uh, Mr Chair, it, it is important that we, when we look at um, part one of this bill and, and the purpose clause within it, that we, that we note that the notion that people have insufficient means are supported is an important one. When we look at the rise in cost of living that's going on in New Zealand at the moment, when people are facing bills that they simply cannot afford just for the basics, for power, for food, for petrol, if you're then put in a situation of needing legal support and this kind of legal aid system was not around, 
that would be injurious to justice and to the kind of society that I think most members of this House would want to live in. It is a plain fact of the matter that a large legal bill on top of the kinds of bills people are facing in their everyday life today would be a disincentive for people to seek justice, and that would be wrong. Just as, as we raised in this House before the question of, of the cost of taking people for medical attention, if that's a disincentive, that would be wrong as well. Call the Honourable Simon Power.